Hi everyone, Argentina here. Welcome to my interviews with uh, experts. And today I'm very, very excited to present you um, this great interview that I did with coaching expert Denise Patit. She is uh, an expert on dating and her um, company website is called Mentality. I just love it. So she ex specializes in helping women and men as well in the dating world. Um, and, but more than anything, she's really good at understanding or communicating how a man thinks. And uh, it was such a great interview, so much insight from this. And uh, she is going to have a webinar coming up on February 20th, I believe. And uh, she also has um, uh, group coaching. Um, the one that she has coming up is for women only. And so all the, the links uh, to her um, group, uh, Facebook group, her webinar are in, in, in this, um, below this video. And I really encourage you to follow her and join her uh, mailing list so you can receive an invitation to attend um, her free, you know, it's gonna be live webinars. So if you go live, you're gonna have a chance to actually um, ask her questions personally. And uh, we talk a little bit about actually getting a retreat together um, uh, on, on dating. Uh, so stay tuned for maybe in the future hear something about maybe going to Costa Rica or again back to Fiji or somewhere exotic but we can all get away from everything and just focus intensely in one thing which is our dating life and I'm so excited because as you all know I'm single and in the market and why not I've been single for a, over a year and uh, maybe it's time for me to actually start to get out there. So I'm definitely gonna be live um, or attending her live um, webinar. And um, so sign up in the link below to her um, webinar and, uh, and we connect that way. So enjoy this, um, this interview, bye. So, well, hi, Denise. I am so excited to have you here and so excited that my audience gets to know you and to hear about what you have to share about dating because you are, um, you know, an expert on, on dating and relationships. And uh, what I have found is, um, you know, my the women that follow me, my followers, most of them are over 40 and at least half of them are single women and uh or they are dating and right. or they're looking into find you know the a partner a good partner to spend the rest of their lives and uh quite often i find you know we get into these conversations and i don't exclude my exclude myself from this but we are very frustrated women over after a certain age you know we just feel that there's no good men out there anymore that all the good men are taken well, yeah. And right. whatever is left, you know, we can't figure them out. They, they can't commit or they're not in a good place in their lives. Um, or we're still like, you know, pulling so much out of them and they don't want to like do the work with us. So it's very, very frustrating. And, um, right. and uh, some of us, I think that we just gave up and and uh -huh. we have resigned ourselves to die alone and you know what for you know i'm done with relationships and i i'm, I'm a strong believer in in marriage and mm -hmm. having a partner you know uh um right now i'm in a personal break myself but uh but i do believe that there is great relationships out there and there's great men out there i also yeah. believe that as we get older it gets harder to it find does. ideal, you know, because we get peakier and obviously we all age. And the first thing that we see is obviously the physical appearance. And, um, and sometimes we just can deal with that. Um, so tell us first a little bit about you and then follow up with where do you find good quality men after 40? But don't tell us about us, about you. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, uh, I was one of the most frustrated women, and mm -hmm. I actually, I'll give you a little background before I tell you about how I got into dating, but I was that 
ambitious career woman, mid to twenties to late thirties, about to hit 36, no, sorry, 34 at the time. Um, and struggling then, and this was before the, the when digital dating and online dating was just taking off, right? And back then was also frustrating, even at that age. And the funny thing is, is that uh, I might, might have lost the connection there a second. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Um, so I dated for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was uh, almost 36 that I actually met someone, divorced man, got married, had my own family, and didn't even start having kids till 40s. So it is frustrating. And it was frustrating then, and it's frustrating now. But the single thing that was constant is that men think differently than women. No matter what tools we have to find them, mm -hmm. no matter what our age is, what our status in life is, the thing that's constant is everywhere we go, there we are, and men and women communicate differently. Mm -hmm. um, after being a psychotherapist, which was definitely not good for my dating life, right? <laughs> Try to date a woman who's a psychotherapist. Yeah, in your 20s, yeah. right? Not good, that was like a date hazard. But I learned a lot from the couples back then that I interviewed and went into headhunting, right? So being a recruiter, making the match. And I thought, oh my goodness, there's some strange similarities between online dating and headhunting, finding a great candidate. When you put those two together at almost 50 years old, my actually I'm 51 now, not mm -hmm. all that was then. Mm -hmm. um, I went into dating coaching wanting to help women connect and understand men mm -hmm. and learn some of the shifts that it took me to learn, not just in dating, but in marriage. And 15 years later, I'm still married, so something's working. And so that's what I want to share is just kind of the, the journey, what I found, what I discovered. And I absolutely believe and know that women can find love again. And I want them to know that. And I want them to know how. Mm -hmm. All right. That, that's uh, well. I, I'm, I'm so glad that, that you recognize that you were in our shoes. Oh. That's so important. Yeah. Um, you know, I follow a couple of you know dating coaches, but most there are, a lot of them are a man. And yeah, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they had great insight. But mm -hmm. I think it's better coming from a woman because you know you obviously understand how we feel. I wouldn't try to coach a man into dating unless he wants to know how we think. Um, but I think it's just so much better to get it from when somebody of the same sex. So, um, so, so tell us where are the best places to find and, and you know, let's define quality men. Okay. Right. Um, quality men. And, and, and I think that, you know, I have a great insight of what I would consider a quality man in his fifties. Um, okay. and, and for me, I consider a quality man in his 50s, somebody that, first of all, is not broke. <laughs> yeah, it helps if they have a job. That's really a good thing. And that's a big deal. Yes, because later. if you arrive to your 50s and you are still, um, you know, you're, you're broke or in a lot of debt. And I'm not saying, you know, you don't have a house because I don't own a house, you know, I mean, not at least in the United States, I yeah, own a house in Mexico, yeah, it's but it's okay fun. renting. But, uh, but at least you live in a decent place and you had your finances and your retirement, even if you have alimony, that's okay. But financially, you know, <laughs> you're okay. Yeah. And, um, good quality man in his fifties, he takes care of his body. He's not overweight. Okay. and full of diseases and um that is just a couch potato never moves and and can like climb a pair of stairs you know without getting you know and a stroke or he's taking right, out some right. medication um number three he has great relationships with his family and his friends and he has lots of friends and more than anything he is genuinely happy with his life he yeah. doesn't need to well, be completed and not to interrupt, but what you're talking about is really important. And there's a really simple acronym that I teach women. It's just basically the five F's, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking out on the outside, outside requirements, not how they treat you, but I'm going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Just outside requirements. 
the five S are you said is okay finances. How does he manage his finances? Because I'd like to know a that he has some to manage, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, <laughs> and b that he's responsible with his money so that he doesn't want to take mine. And right. the second thing is really, and maybe the first, is faith. We have to share some kind of faith, and whatever that faith is for you, core value is faith is really the common anchor, right? Mm-hmm. So. And again, whatever your faith is, you need to know what his is. And ladies, if you happen to be uh, any kind of religion, really, and we'll just talk to Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. I would tell you right now, as long as the seed is there and at some point in their life they were doing the things that would indicate they're pursuing their faith, there's hope. It really takes women sometimes reawakening men, especially post-divorce, Mm-hmm. Because they don't feel worthy sometimes to walk into, let's say, a church or to say that they're whatever they are mm-hmm. because they don't feel they're walking the walk. So sometimes a good, strong woman can reawaken that. Mm-hmm. So faith is not always exactly apparent when you first meet them. It mm-hmm. takes a little bit to dig into that. Um, the other thing you said was friends, right? Friends. Mm-hmm. Do they have any do they have any old friends that have put up with their asses long enough to still call themselves friends? Right. And I don't believe in any man that says, well, I just, everyone's married. All my friends are married. I just don't have any. They're, you know, and if they've all died, that's too bad. If it's, then that means they're really old, right? Yeah. So <laughs> friends are important. Um, family, if his own mother and him do not have a relationship, that's usually an indicator that there's definitely some trouble. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily that you can't overcome it, but a man's relationship with his mother is his primary relationship with females. So yeah. look at his family relationships, including the ties that he has with his ex-wife, whether that's volatile, whether that's friendly, manageable, because whatever he's managing, you get to manage, right? Yeah. So the friendly, family, friends, finances, faith, and um, fun. You mm-hmm. want to know that a man has some sort of hobbies, something that differentiates him and makes him unique, something perhaps you can share. Mm-hmm. If he has none, that's a problem, mm-hmm. right? Because we need a fun man, someone to do things with. So those five Fs, I say look at those right off, just just as a small indicator and mm-hmm. touch on those subjects on your first or second date. All right, just touch on it. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And now that you mention it, you know, I'm starting to look back into past relationships. And there was always, you know, a, a problem, one of those in, in those five things. And, and it's great because sometimes, you know, we get so taken back with somebody that we meet that we mm-hmm. ignore those things. We kind of like, it's kind of like when you find this absolutely fantastic pair of shoes in the store, it's the only pair. Yeah. And it's one size too small, or half a size too small, so you oh, can fit it in. Yeah. And it's tight, oh, but oh. it's so beautiful. You buy it anyway. <laughs> yeah, if only I could just make it work. If I could just change him. If I could just get him. And then once I have him, I'll just, I'll just change him a little bit. And you know what yeah. I always tell women? You can't change a man. Especially after 50. Oh, no, in their 50s. And what you can do is dress him up a little bit different. You can move his furniture around. You can dump some of his ugly looking whatever furniture he has. That's all easy. He'll let you change anything that's superficial. Yeah. But you can't change how he, his temperament. You can't change his core values and you can't change how he perceives the world. Right. Right. And I always love to tell women like the, the even bigger thing than the five F's that I look for. There's two kinds of people in life, and you need to ask yourself which kind are you. Mm -hmm. There's the kind that other things happen to them, and there's the kind that they make things happen. Mm -hmm. So they're either blaming things on circumstances, or they're taking the problem, deciding what they need to do to deal with it, and then they make things happen. Mm -hmm. You want a man who makes things happen, not things happen to him. Mm-hmm. And you can hear that in every explanation in life. Like, oh, so what happened? I um, uh, see that you, you know, you, you mentioned that you changed careers. What happened? Well, you know, it's just that nobody really in the, my career wants an older man. And so 
I had to go out and find a new job. Well, my ex-wife, she was this and she was that. And so that's what caused X, Y, Z. Like, mm -hmm. no, we don't want a man who's always blaming things on other people. Mm -hmm. You want a man that takes responsibility and tells you his part. And that's what you want to do as a woman. Take your part. Own your part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel that in a way we, we, we because we're with, um, we're giving creatures and we want to protect. Yeah. It's just our nature. When a man comes to us with that story, oh, poor, we only see, you know, hear his side of the story, obviously. And it, oh, poor you, your, you know, your wife was a bitch or your asshole, you know, uh, boss, you know, and we want to shelter them. When in reality, you know, I'm sorry, but doesn't matter. Even if, if the shittiest thing happens to you in life, you put yourself in that situation. You decide to take yourself out and you realize that you have no control in other people's reactions, just in how you react to that situation. And, right. and for me, blaming, I'm sorry, but I was divorced twice and I don't blame it on them. I pick them. I pick them. Right. I recognize yeah, yeah. them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and therein lies the first thing is, is that the one, the wonderful thing about being bold at 50, and if you're even listening and you're not at 50 by chance, what's wonderful about that is it doesn't matter what your circumstances are right now, you get to choose. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a career woman, for example, like I was and like you are, and you're finding that men are intimidated by your success, guess what? You're dating down. Yeah. You should be dating a man who's totally comfortable with your success. Mm -hmm. So it's not that men are intimidated by your success. It's that you're not dating high up the ladder, right? Yeah. And, and there's other issues that go along with that. But one of your key questions, and I think that everyone has asked me, the first thing they always ask is the where. Yeah. Where do I meet high-quality men once you know what they are, right? Right. And the answer to that is, everywhere and nowhere so what i mean by that is <laughs> Gee, you thanks think denise like, <laughs> yeah well think like a man okay just think like a man first of all it's like okay well where would as a headhunter where would i recruit a high quality six figure seven figure candidate that has all these requirements that my employer wants right mm -hmm. it's complex i tell you one thing you can't fall in love from your couch so if you're surfing online, waiting for that man to show up like Amazon Prime, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so you first have to look at, okay, what do I enjoy? What am I doing? What are my hobbies? What's my social network? How often am I getting out to do the things that I enjoy to where I could attract the kind of man into my life just by the mere fact that I'm doing what I like, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a thought. But I will say there are some wares. So men eat and they work out. Mm -hmm. That's about it. That's what they do. Yeah. They're not going to be on wine Wednesdays down at the local wine bar while you're hanging out with your five girlfriends, and they're definitely not going to approach you. But they might be at a classy steakhouse or somewhere that's kind of like a moderate scale bar and restaurant where people know their name, where they could feel comfortable sitting at the bar and having a quick dinner. And even if they have a lot of money, it's going to be happy hour. They like a deal. Yeah, oh, you know I mean? okay. Oh, yeah. 4.30 to 6.30 at your local upscale something, restaurant, whatever, they will eat alone. Um, or it's revolving around food. I mean, they might be at a barbecue place at lunch. They might be at a chili cook-off. But it's going to be around food, like almost always. That sounds silly, but it is. Um, it's going to be around fitness. They're not going to be doing, uh, what's the, what's the little, um, well, yoga, yeah, maybe, but not, not anything. They're just going to be working out yeah. and they're very intensely focused. So if you're a woman who wants a fit guy, hopefully you're being fit and you're somewhere getting fit, but don't go to just an all girls gym. That's wasting your time. Right. And you don't, you don't need to lose weight before you go to the gym either. Yeah. So just go there as you are. You know, um, so yeah, gyms, restaurants. I had girls recently this weekend. They're like, oh my God, do you know how many men are at company or corporate sponsored chili cook-offs? Like they're everywhere. Rodeos, walking around, doing their 
their strut showing off their barbecue, you know? It's uh-huh. like little simple things. And then they have to grocery shop, right? They have to go to the store and buy food just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. But it really comes down to how often are you putting yourself out there, being social, looking around for who may be around you, right? Um, because it's, we're human. We, we, we lose sight of what's around us and there's men right under our nose. We just don't look like they're right there. So those are just like quick, quick yeah. things. What do you think about online? Are they online dating? Because yes, I mean, my, my experience with online dating, I mean, my one of my husbands was from online. My last uh, boyfriend was also online and that didn't work out. And, and I knew it from the beginning they were not the, the ideal man, but in a way I was, you know, in a different place in my life and I wanted to be in a relationship and I said, yeah. okay, this is good enough. <laughs> and I settled. Yeah, but now that enough. I think of it, I never met Maybe I didn't do it long enough or I didn't knew how to do it or I ignore the, the, the good clues of what a good man is. Um, but I didn't find, I find a lot of players and, and I didn't find really high quality, you know, men with, with my standards. So what do you say about online dating? So here's the deal with online dating. Um, it's interesting because as a headhunter, Hunter, right after my my career in psychology as a headhunter I would go and use something called monster mm. and monster is easy to get into everybody can get into it it doesn't cost money mm-hmm. that's kind of like match it's a low entry tool mm-hmm. and that means you can get tons of people on there and so some of the large online dating sites like a lot of them that don't cost a lot of money like match or okay cupid or whatever Um, A ton of people are coming in on it, and let's just think, if I were a successful man, then what we know about men is they have a low tolerance for rejection. They fear rejection. Mm -hmm. And the more ambitious and successful you are as a man, the less tolerance you have for rejection. Mm -hmm. And when they get online, these really good quality men, It's just what happens. There's a certain kind of behavior that happens online that we can't control, but it's not your normal everyday personality. So when they put their profiles up and no woman responds or no women are text uh, messaging them back quickly because women just don't, like women act different online, these men get a high deal of rejection. We would think because they're good looking, They say a couple of the right things, that they would just be having women all over them. But the reality is it's really overwhelming for good men in the online world because the rejection is still high. And that that's something we don't really understand. And so if they get on there and they get rejected quickly by women not answering them or um, women being showing up as low quality, right, low value, Um, they immediately are like, oh my gosh, I, I don't, I don't like this. I'm not, I feel like a failure mm-hmm. and I don't want to feel like a failure because I have a busy life. I'm a good man. And it, it magnifies their feeling of insecurity. So mm-hmm. they're in and out in a short period of time online. And so it's really like kind of a numbers game on certain apps. Yeah. They're in and out and they don't like filling out a shitload of information about themselves yeah. because men are short. Yeah. Short attention spans, right? Um, mm-hmm. they, they're like investment oriented is what I always teach women. A high value man is investment oriented. He wants to know how much do I have to do to get return on my value? So if they go online and they have to fill out like 50 or 80 questions about themselves, they'll yeah. do it, but uh-huh. they don't like it. And if it's a low return immediately, they get off. Yeah. So I think that really right now, Depending on your age and depending on your location, I like some of the mobile apps a bit better. Like I do like Bumble. I like it mm-hmm. because it's easy for a professional man to get on. If he travels, he can easily use it on his phone, right? Mm-hmm. It's hard to read OkCupid okay, and match on your phone sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, 
swipe right, swipe left, have a couple of lines of conversation. Mm -hmm. If it seems like there's banter and you share some common things, guess what? They've got 24 to 40 hours, right, to respond to you and bam, you're gone. So that's a push to get a good, ambitious yeah. man. So I say, you know, maybe start with Bumble. There's Bumble. Lots yeah. of people, you know, and, and even, I would probably argue, but, you know, Tinder has been known as a hookup app. Yes, it has been known as that. Yeah. But the reality is you are not a hookup and you set the standard. So if you try Bumble and you're not getting enough choices, you might try Tinder because mm -hmm. honestly, they're kind of similar, mm -hmm. um, except for the, the stereotype. Mm -hmm. And I've had women who have actually got on Tinder without the intention of a hookup because you set the standard, mm -hmm. right? And if the guy is wanting a hookup, he's going to act like you're in the messaging. He's going to tell you in the messaging. And yeah. you just dump him and move on. But I say start with like Bumble and know that these men, they fear approaching. And there's no different online. And so you have to do the choosing when you get online. Most women I know wait to be messaged, wait for someone to come and say something to them, save their favorites, and then kind of hope that since they're saved in the favorites, this man's going to say something. Mm -hmm. And they don't. Most of them just don't. Mm -hmm. So I say I'm doing the choosing. I'm going to do the first message. I'm going to throw out the hook, right? It's my job um, counterintuitively to initiate. I'm dropping the handkerchief. That's all I'm doing. Right. Hi there. See that you uh, like, I don't know, country western dancing. Curious to uh, what are your favorite places? That's it. That's all I'm going to do. I dropped the handkerchief. Right. Now it's their job to respond. I made it rejection proof. That, that, so, yeah, that, that's true. We had to initiate. And we, we just saw into the mentality of the damsel in distress and that we had to be rescued and pursued and found. And, uh, well, I'm sorry, but playing, you know, Sleeping Beauty. No, <laughs> no and you know You're what? still it, sleeping. It, <laughs> no, and you know, it's such a fine balance because, and, and this may be controversial, but, you know, the feminine movement and the whole um, career mentality that we ambitious women have, because I am one of those women. I'm mm -hmm. like, I want it now. I, you know, I don't want to wait. Like I'm going to interview, not interview, but I'm going to ask you some pointed questions on the first date. I'm a go-getter. I'm a driver. If you don't have, you know, if you don't have time and if you're low standard, I don't have time for you. And there's a little bit of an attitude that develops there and we don't realize it, but our impatience sometimes and our expectations are so quick. Mm -hmm. Men move way more slowly than we do. And, you know, maybe we'll talk about that in a little bit, but there are tons of men that want relationships, but they say they don't. You know when they want a relationship? What? When they do, when they're in it. So they mm -hmm. start with, I'm not looking for a relationship. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, guess what? They are in a relationship with some other girl that he dated after you, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not that they didn't want one. It's that... A man doesn't know what he feels if you're compatible for him until he's in dating in a relationship with you. So a lot of men, again, it's all about rejection. Mm -hmm. They, they, let's picture the average man in their fifties, okay? Mm -hmm. Or forties, whatever. They just got divorced, let's say two years ago. That'd be ideal, but let's yeah. just say probably their wife wasn't sleeping with them. Mm -hmm. So what do you think they want at first? Sexual Thanks. validation, yeah, right? Because they weren't getting it at home. They're feeling kind of low. They're still kind of like, this thing is interesting. This is cool. But I need to know, does she like sex? Because I don't want another one of those relationships. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they're looking to validate themselves sexually. And then they don't like rejection. So the moment they hear anything that sounds like a complaint, sounds like criticism, or sounds like your work, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're like cats. You know, there's cats and there's dogs. Yeah. The cats are curious. They come in, they sniff, they look, they test it out. But the moment there's something that seems weird, they back off. Danger. Mm -hmm. Right? Men are like cats initially when you first meet them online. They're looking for consistency. They're looking for um, 
low drama, right? Mm -hmm. How much freedom do you give them? Um, that's what they want. They want freedom. They want consistency. So, so we have to really pace ourselves a lot slower than what we're doing in dating right now for men. The good men will want to pursue that. And so pace is really important. Does it, that make sense? Yeah, completely. Absolutely. So, um, oh, what was I going to say? Um, how, you know, uh, I'll, I put myself as an example. I consider myself, um, you know, driven, successful. I have my shit together. I mean, I had no fear of getting in and out of a relationship and getting what yeah. I want. Um, but a lot of us, we do complain that we scare quality men off because we are so assertive. We are so driven. We know what we want. We have our own money. We are very free and we don't let anyone tell us what we can or cannot do is so independent and um you know and and we complain it's like i scare good quality men off and i only attract the needy ones the ones that are looking for somebody that wants to be told what to do the right. looking for a mother you know which i have to you know i do attract those a lot <laughs> no man when, when powerful I women yeah yeah i said broken wing syndrome yeah like there's something i always had to fix yeah yeah so talk about that i get a lot of successful women here in the studio i mean lawyers accountants you know business owners i mean they have their own money they raise their kids by themselves you know and um they have their own businesses they have money they have careers they dedicate they're beautiful you know but um but they're alone and they yeah. or either dating it's a drum player or a mechanic someone gone yeah. or you know or somebody that is just starting to his business business or starting back in school and ends up moving in with her because she's the one with the house that happened to me like how did he end up living in my house <laughs> you know it's so easy for yeah. them to let go of their apartments and move in with you because you're the one with the house so what the hell is happening there Dennis? tell us Oh, I love this question because it took me so many years to figure out what the heck was wrong with me, right? I dated people like Carlitos and um, Fernando and even a Gourmet, if you can imagine, right? <laughs> and the only thing that all of these, I, I, it's like I traveled the world, but I never left the country, okay, seriously. <laughs> and I had to look and I'm like, what the hell do all these men have in common? Why do I keep picking the wrong men? And guess what the commonality was? Me. You. There was nothing that all of those guys had in common but me. Mm -hmm. And so it really wasn't until I, really until I got married, I would say, well, dating my husband, dating. Yeah. Um, there's this thing, and I didn't label it like this, but we have a certain energy, right? We have, mm -hmm. we have masculine energy and we have feminine energy. And there's a lot of woo-woo information out there on this whole masculine and feminine energy thing. The thing that you need to understand is that polarity is what, what makes two people come together. So if you want a masculine man, then you need to have a feminine energy. Mm -hmm. If you want a feminine energy man, then be a masculine energy woman. And the best I can tell you in a nutshell, and I go over this in the coaching to a great extent because Every situation gives you two ways to respond. One is with masculine energy and the other is with feminine. And what we don't realize is that there is a communication style of communicating that's very masculine for us career-driven women. And there is a very feminine communication style that we haven't been taught because we've been rewarded in our career for being decisive, for planning, for doing, for driving something, for fixing something, for anticipating needs, for providing. We are givers yeah. in our career. Well, when it comes to men and you understand that, and you, we know this psychologically as smart women, we know, oh yeah, yeah, man's primal instincts is to provide, mm -hmm. to protect, and to be respected. Well, if those are his primal instincts, and he comes to you, and you tell him about indirectly right that 
you have everything you need and you don't really need a man. And whenever he's looking for something to provide to you, he, keep, he can't find an opportunity. He can't find a place to squeeze into your life to where you are in a receiving role, right? Mm-hmm. And feminine energy is all about receiving. So if you're doing all the giving, trying to anticipate his needs, trying to suggest what you should, you should do, trying to solve his problems, trying to help him, then there's nothing for him to give you. And the only way that men really feel emotionally connected is when they make us happy, when they're able to provide to us, right? Mm-hmm. So when we, when, when they look and they can see that we're accepting something that they're giving to us. And I think there's a lot of misconception about what that means in dating now. That doesn't mean they need a weak woman. No way. They hate mm-hmm. weak women. What it means is we need to be more aware of how we're communicating with men and the kind of energy we're putting off. Mm-hmm. And that's a deep subject and it's hard to explain in like a quick interview, but it's, it's about creating polarity and about receiving. Mm-hmm. And I think as career women, we're just not quite aware of how our, our, our achievement in our careers has rewarded us for being the opposite of what works in dating. So it is a complete um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Perception change. Uh, there's another yeah. word for it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's being aware of the energy you're putting off and also realizing that when you date weaker men, yeah. guess what? You don't have to be. You don't have to vulnerable. be a woman. You don't have to be vulnerable. Vulnerable. Yeah. When you date weaker men, subconsciously, you're keeping yourself safe because if you don't really have to be in a position of needing or receiving you're stronger he cannot threaten you Mm -hmm. and it goes back to a lot of our our primary relationships with our fathers or how we achieved affection how we how we make sense of our past and that's not something that we need to focus on a lot because let's face it we all have screwed up beginnings of some sort right with our parents and our fathers and whatever what matters more is that you have clarity of what you want now so for every woman it starts with really getting clear about what kind of man is really going to be compatible for you a man who's a mechanic and you're a high-end whatever you are a lawyer Unless he absolutely is happy with his status in life, because men do have the financial clock, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to find a man that has, that is completely happy with his status, his title, and the amount of money he earns in life. He Mm -hmm. can be a janitor, seriously. Right. If he's thrilled to be a janitor, he makes enough money to provide for his need, and he's happy with his achievement, okay, then be a janitor. But Mm -hmm. the reality is, most of the the men out there are still trying to get that what they thought they should be right Mm -hmm. we can't date those men Mm -hmm. if he's not happy with where he's at in his life and you see you see him striving to do that he's not for you Mm -hmm. you need to date men that are happy with their financial status their their status in life right that's at least half the battle yeah but yeah, it's like put an end to that wounded bird syndrome, to that good enough for now thing. Mm-hmm. We have got to date men that are equally strong, but to put ourselves in a position of receiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. This, that, that was a lot of talk. But no, no, but sub- very, very insightful. I mean, it, it sometimes we just need to hear it over and over and over until something finally clicks. So, um, how can you tell if, if you find? you know, a, a good quality man. And how can you tell that, you know, he's happy, he's healthy, that he is really, in, in my opinion, you know, a good man, you know, what we consider quality man, they're happily married. A woman is not gonna let him go. So whatever is out there in the pool, they're divorced for a reason. 
Kind of, yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, well, we could flip that on us too, right? That's true. That's why it's like, you know, I want to take myself out of the pool until I figure out. Like, you, you, you're you, amazing, and you've got so many women you work with that are amazing. Right? So we could equally say, well, what's wrong with us? So we all have values. That's that's definitely clear, right? Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that people don't start amazing. So we really have to have some compassion that divorce is so hard on everybody. And the thing about men that I find that we don't realize is that men, divorce makes men feel like a worse than women. Okay, we repeat, have repeat that again because you got cut off. We look at all yeah, repeat that again oh, after divorce because you got cut off. Divorce really makes men feel, all men, feel like a failure. Mm. Even if there's something that could be explained or a disconnect or uh, a crisis or anything, right? But I have met and I coach men as well because I know we need to coach men to, to tell women, right? Um, i give you an idea. So when I met my husband, Mm -hmm. 34 years old, 35 almost, uh, he he was divorced and he had a 10-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. And when you're 30-something, let's be real, your knight in shining armor isn't going to come divorced with a, with a kid. Yeah. And I'm like, hell no. I want like someone my age, somebody who's first time. I want my Cinderella story. Yeah. So I said no. Well, finally, the friend who was persistent tricked me into meeting him on a random day three months later. And I just, I didn't know that wanting a man a certain way is sometimes more about our ego thinking like somehow we have control of what's going to make a man compatible, right? Um, but long story short, when I met him, I didn't realize that being divorced and even though that woman did things to him to make him have to leave her he still took responsibility for that divorce that was a failure and that fear of failure so in the beginning it was an amazing connection like what you would dream of you know it was like I got over the kid thing I got over the divorce thing he was fun we had so much in common and then about about six months Three to six months, a man starts pulling back from you. It always happens. Like, there are definitely phases of dating that I teach women. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a good man pull back. What you do when he pulls back is the difference between whether he goes forward or whether he stays with you. Like, good men always pull back because they start getting scared. They start evaluating, oh, my God, this woman is sucking me into her life. I'm going to lose my freedom. I, I, I don't even know who I am. I haven't seen my friends. And then, oh, my God, what if I fail? And then we, we get married, and then I fail again. All right? yeah. This is the thing. So my husband tried to break up with me, not lying, three times. Wow. It's not you. It's me. Oh. You're damn right it's you, <laughs> right? Of course it was him. Yeah. But you know what I just said? Uh, okay, so help me understand this. You're having a lot of fun with me. We've seen each other practically every other day for the last four or five months. And you don't feel you're happy. You want to pull back. Like, it's not you, it's me. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm, I know there's someone better for you. And well, I just have a lot on my mind and I need to figure things out. And, you know, maybe I just need more time by myself to mm -hmm. figure things out. Mm -hmm. How many times have Everyone listening heard that. It's not you, it's me. Yeah. Here's the difference. Prior to him saying he wanted to break up with me, because it's him, not me, his actions were consistent. He was calling me, he's texting me, he was wanting to see me, he was doing nice things for me. His actions matched his words, mm -hmm. right? So the first thing you have to look at is, is this man consistent? and congruent with what he says versus what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And my man was consistent. Mm -hmm. So when he said, it's not you, it's me, I'm like, he's scared shitless. Yeah. 
he's pulling back because he thinks he's going to be found out. Like, I'm going to discover that he's not as good as I think he is, right? And so I said, you know, yeah, well, it is you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's not me. <laughs> it's definitely you. It sounds to me like maybe you just need some time on your own. Why don't, why don't we just, like, take a break this week and maybe even next? And I've got a lot going on myself, and, you know, why don't you just focus on yourself, work out, see some friends, do what you need to do, but then I'm going to see you, like, in a week from now. Uh -huh. he, and he was like, what do you what do you mean, like, I'm going to see you in a week? Like, yeah, you, we're going to see each other in a week. He's like, but, oh, but I was just telling you, like, it's uh, for you. I'm like, oh, I'll be the judge of that. I just think you need some time on your own. So go ahead and do that. And then let's just see how it goes after that. And he was like, okay. Um, <laughs> well, that's kind of strange. That's not how I expected this conversation to go. And what what said, was he yeah. expecting? He was expecting me to cry and be sad and mm. to beg him to stay and, and you know, be sad, be freak out. Yeah. Freak okay. out. Okay. And so a lot of times what, what we have to realize is that when a man pulls, I call it the, the uh, it's called mirroring, mirroring a man, right? If a man pulls back, then you lean back. If a man leans forward, then you lean forward. And the thing is, is that the man wants to, he, he if he's not texting you much, for example, mm -hmm. don't text him as much. If he starts uh, pulling back with his time, lean back let him mm -hmm. we don't need to it's like a the whole rubber band right what makes amazing relationships are tension and sometimes in the gap when you're when you have that tension sometimes in that gap is when people decide that they really love you or they really care about you or they really miss something but if they're trying to pull back and then you're trying to go forward there's no gap. There's no tension. Okay. And so a lot of times, and, and that is if the man is consistent, congruent, shares your values, feels compatible, it's going to come up. It's going to happen. But you let men pull back and you just lean back. Because the man that you want, you will not be able to say anything wrong. You can't say the wrong thing to the right man. Mm -hmm. And you're not in control of it, right? We want men who love us who want us but a lot of times we get very emotional and during the time they pull back we don't manage our emotions very well and then everything that they feared happens she gets mean and angry and emotional and then he doesn't know how to respond and he's like see I knew it I knew that I would mess this thing up it wasn't gonna work women are difficult and oh my gosh I'm just better off alone no just be like look at that man like your son I look at him like whether he's throwing a man tantrum or having like an emotional meltdown just oh okay i hear what you're saying yeah that must be really hard well you know what i, I actually yeah i think that's a good idea let's let's spend some time apart mm -hmm. that sounds like a great idea because i'm accustomed to a man who wants me a man who knows what he wants and if you're not sure right now you should take that time yeah because I am the prize. I'm high value. I know in my heart that even if it kills me to let go of that man a little bit, that if you really know how much value you are and that you are good enough right now, then the right man will come back. He just might take a little breather, a little break, mm -hmm. but don't freak out because the good man will come right back. They all do it. Mm -hmm. So there's so many of these things I want to share with women out there yeah. because we just don't understand how powerful we are as women. We're so powerful, true. men are afraid of us. True, true. We, we think we women under, scare men. Yes, we undervalue ourselves. And as, and as I was telling you, we settle for less than what we know we deserve because sometimes, at least, uh, you know, my philosophy, you know, way in my 20s and my 30s, you know, the good men go with better women than me. I'm just at this level and this is all I can get. I cannot get anything better. I didn't feel that 
I deserve, I couldn't, you know, I, I could, I couldn't be shared for somebody, uh, you know, of, of a higher value or, or capacity or, or maturity. So I settled at that level because I honestly thought that was all I could get. And so I had to actually lower my bar so much to let those men into my life. And, you know, as I mature, I got a little bit better and I had to say, you know, definitely when I feel more confident about my, my looks, you know, through boudoir photography, that really, really changed my, my, my self-esteem and my perception of me and my value. And, uh, and I started to date, you know, way better. And, uh, and then I found myself actually rejecting high quality men because it was like, I realized that what they wanted is not what I wanted. They wanted, you know, a wife to be there, like to be a wife, not an entrepreneur. And it's like, that's not what I want. I mean, men on, on paper, you look absolutely amazing. And any woman that wanted to be really a wife to stay home, to support you, to go to church with you and take care of your house and be there for you, you know, but that's not me. I'm on the opposite. I'm, I'm my own, you know, I so independent. So, and I think it was um, when I started to find my value that I wasn't like, oh my God, this like really great guy is wanting me. Okay. And just stop being who I truly was because I felt that I was so lucky that somebody like that man would actually look at me. And right. so I think when the, the number one thing I think to, for us to really find a man uh, that we can have a great relationship with is to first find our own value and not think that we had to settle for less than what we want and we deserve just not to be alone because that is a bad thing yeah yeah and I always say to women you know uh, one of my favorite mantras is to be you have to be the one to find the one and, but I'm going to tell you right now, going through the self growth process, right? You're never going to be perfect. You're never going to be fully developed. You're never, you are a work in progress. And so sometimes the changes that you need to make in yourself happen in the doing process, right? You may not be fully comfortable dating and you may think, well, you know, I need to lose, I don't know, nine, 10 pounds, get in shape. I want to work on my health. I want to, um, you know, just feel better about me. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're building a muscle, which I like to look at dating and connections with men, like building muscles, right? You're, there's certain muscles that are weak, but you have a blind spot. You don't know exactly what it takes to fix that muscle. So when I coach women in my group coaching program, we actually kind of figure out, okay, where's the... What, what do you want? Like you mm -hmm. said, get clear. What do you want? Let's figure out what area of your competence is struggling. And a lot of times that's just masked, right? We're mm -hmm. in our careers, we're strong, but when it comes to our vulnerability with men, for some reason we're weak. Mm -hmm. So we get clear on what you want. We start building the confidence in your body, confidence in um, your financials, your finances, because there's nothing worse than feeling like you can't survive on your own financially. Mm -hmm. That will drive you into the arms of usually a narcissistic guy or somebody who wants to take advantage of you. That's right. horrible. So I love to, like you said, work with women and to look at ourselves like the five S. Well, mm -hmm. what's my family look like? And right. what's my this and my faith and my finances and my fun, my flirt? Like, am I even fun? Because honestly, if you're not even enjoying your life, what makes you think a man's gonna enjoy time with you, yeah. right? Yeah. We need to be having some freaking fun, taking chances, getting healthy, and that's why I love what you do, mm -hmm. is making women feel sexy and look at their bodies in a way that's like, yes, I love my body. Mm -hmm. I don't like my butt, but I sure like my biceps. Yes. I don't like my stomach, but my boobs look pretty good. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, find what you like and yeah. focus on that. And don't stop. You can, seriously, the women that I start working with, I just love it because once you really understand, I say the mentality of men, right? How men think that they love our bodies, 
and they don't care that we have a little bit of weight on us. They just care about our proportion. We're the ones that care about our bodies. And it's not, it's not the women's fault. And, and if you're listening right now, I want you to know it's not your fault that you have all of these hangups and thoughts and things and misunderstandings about men. There is nobody who gave us some kind of guide to men, a mm-hmm. guide to dating. Our mothers and our fathers, especially my generation, right? I'm in 51. They did the best they could. Right. Relationships have changed. Um, our definition and, and what men want from us has changed. Career men, at the heat of it, at the very core of everything, when they're with you, guess what they don't want to talk about? Their careers. Mm-hmm. They want to be silly. They want to be fun. They want to feel. Um, they want to feel like they're just men. And so, when we're career women, sometimes we have a tendency to talk about our careers, to talk about our jobs, to talk about our projects, because we're like, they'll love this because this shows that I'm intelligent. It shows that I'm smart. And they're looking at us like, great, another day at work on this yeah. date. <laughs> like they just want to have fun. So uh-huh. we undervalue the basic things, which is fun and freedom and silliness. Make a man feel a sense of adventure and variety in his life, and he will be with you forever. Mm-hmm. I love and crave adventure and variety. And I'm talking variety in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. And right now, you are enough. I got off tangent there. You are enough. Yeah. And you could literally be only one date away from meeting that amazing man. You could. But I say dating is kind of like winning the lottery. So let's just picture if I gave you a hundred envelopes and I said, you are guaranteed to win a million dollar lottery ticket in one of those hundred envelopes, what would you do? Go one by one and open them one by one. Yeah, I'd see what's inside. And would you go slow? And would you go slow and take breaks? And there's a million dollars in one of these envelopes. Mm-hmm. Would you go slow and take a break? No, really. One after the other. Like, this is not next. Next. What if What if you open one of those envelopes, though, and it was like $10,000? Would that make you stay for a while and you say, forget the rest? If you're telling me I'm winning a million dollars in one of those envelopes, I would just like, I don't care if it's 10000 I know there's a million dollars out there. I'm not going to. Yeah. That's right. You would tear through those freaking envelopes. Those envelopes represent dates. Mm -hmm. They're just envelopes, okay? They're just dates. Every time you go on a date, he he may or may not be the million dollar lottery ticket winner. He's probably gonna be a good 5,000 maybe, or Mm -hmm. maybe it's a 500, but you don't need to stick and stay with the 500 or the Mm -hmm. $5,000 winner, right? That's a good, that'll get you something. But the thing is you have to believe and it comes down to faith. We're not guaranteed that out of those hundred envelopes or one thousand envelopes, let's hope it's less than that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that you're going to meet that amazing man. But when you know in your head that you have great value, that you're fun, that you're amazing, like yes, you're going to meet somebody. Yes, because you are amazing. So. But if you stop and you start self-doubting and you start judging every single date on your agenda, whether it's the million or not the million, and you stop, then you start to to have this kind of negativity, right? You need to have faith and belief. So the biggest thing that I think most women are missing is this belief that they can even have that amazing life that they dream of. And so one of the things I love to do is really focus on the end result. What do you want your life to look like? Mm-hmm. You're you're doing that with women right now. Right. What do you want that to look like? What kind of lifestyle do we want? Like, it's done. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Now, the man is just going to come for the ride. He, he is not our ultimate thing. Like, finding love is amazing, right? But mm-hmm. once you're married, you realize we spend half our life trying to find the right man and the other half trying to live with them. Yes. And so you better like your life the way it is when you meet that man. And the more happy you are, as you said internally, when you meet that man, the less you need them to be a certain way. Mm-hmm. Temperament and values and um, communication are key. 
And that at the heart of it is really how any of us grow in anything, right? And, and that's what I teach and I have a group that's called the um, Art of Attracting a High Quality Man. Mm-hmm. It's a free group, but we teach, I like to teach women what are low quality traits, what are high quality traits, what are low quality actions and high quality actions, because really anyone can be a high value woman. It is, there's particular skills. It's not just you are or you're not, there's skills. And it's about discipline, awareness, communication, Mm -hmm. and understanding men. And um, I love your community. I love what you're doing with the women out there. And I just, I just want everyone to know right now that you are not, that you're amazing the way you are, that you are a pride in, and that when you really get that, that we as women have a superpower that men can never have, mm-hmm. you'll never lower your standards again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right. And it's, a, it's all mental um, more than physical. I think that what makes women the most attractive is confidence and knowing what they want and uh, and that's what makes us you know more attractive you know to men I, I you know talk to men and you know I find it you know surprising that you know I, I get approached a lot you know I, I don't like to use the the word anymore like looking like shit you know we try to look you know, use that word but it's not I look fabulous without makeup you know it's my natural my everyday they can look like me that way I remember one time, you know, when, you know, a man approached me, he's like, oh my God, you're so attractive. And I like took at him. He's like, well, thank you. But when did you see me naked? <laughs> oh. He was like, oh my God. He goes, but, and I was like, oh my God, did I say that out loud? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Now you're a bold one. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never said that, but he's like, well, thank you, but you haven't seen me at my best yet, you know? So, so Denise, tell us about, you know, how women can work with you. What do you have to offer? First of all, you are in Austin, Texas, but you don't have to live in Austin, Texas, I assume so, to work with women. So what do you offer? Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, first of all, you know, one really quick thing I'd like to say is, you know, whatever your challenge is right now with men or dating or relationships, if you're listening to our video call, like, Put it in the comments, like, what is your biggest dating challenge? Because I want to make sure that um, any any struggle that you're having, we might have a tool or something to help you, or maybe we need to do videos together, like yeah. future videos to, to find that out. So tell us what's your biggest dating challenge or with men. And so the first thing is I would love to invite your particular um, followers to my, my Facebook page private group, right? The art of attracting a high quality man. And so, you know, we can include that on a follow-up email or Mm -hmm. something soon. Mm -hmm. Um, And the second thing is that I am really excited that I put together a masterclass coming up. Mm -hmm. And this masterclass really is going to show women how to find, get, and keep what we're calling a high quality man. Perfect. Now, the webinar title might change because sometimes I play with things and change them too many right. times, but it's basically how to find, get, and keep a high-quality man. And I'm going to be doing this this free master class on February 20th. So that's come up. And Valentine's Day, screw Valentine's Day, yeah. whatever, right? <laughs> but I don't want you to be spending next Valentine's or St. Patty's Day or Christmas or whatever freaking holiday there is alone because you're too amazing. So you have to join me on this free masterclass on February 20th, mm-hmm. and I am going to um, give the link, and then you can do a follow-up with your, your group to see it. But I'd love for anyone who's interested, what we're going to be talking about is so many of the career women are so successful in their lives, their career lives, but when it comes to love, what's the challenge? And we started t- talking about that, right? Right. So there's... um. I'll give you the quick overview on an on a email link, and you can share it with your audience. Okay. But it's basically going to be revealing what I call five shifts that really position you with men to where they're inspired to want to be with you, to pursue you, to want to commit to you. And there really are things that you can do and shifts that you can follow 
to put yourself in a position of choosing versus always waiting to be chosen. Right. And so that's the class. It'll be about 45 minutes. Um, and then if women find that that class is helpful, I, I will then invite them into a group coaching plan for women that I have, a, a group coaching. And the group coaching is kind of like a boot camp for, for love. You know, it's yeah. like, who wants to wait to lose 15 pounds and get skinny in a year? Like, let's do this now. So yeah. it's a six to eight weeks. Yeah. yeah, like six to eight weeks. And in six to eight weeks, we can accomplish a lot. And I've done this program two other times. I want to do this one for a group of like 20 women. Mm -hmm. And we'll tell you all about it. But if you can at least come to the, the, the master class, the okay. master class, I'll give, I'll unveil the whole secrets and the whole process. I'm telling you, this class is actually going to be super valuable. So some people may not even need any coaching after that. It might just be enough. <laughs> But I'd love to share that with you and your group and do more of these kind of videos in the future with you. Oh, absolutely. You can count on that because, um, you know, that's something that um, I constantly get women, you know, that are in the same situ situation and uh, looking for the right partner or better the one they already have. So you can bet on that. So yeah, we're going to end up well, our... And, What's that? And, we might make you the guinea pig this year. The guinea pig. Hey, whatever it is. I'm a, I, I'm a public domain right now. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not afraid of talking about, you know, my life, putting myself out there. I, if I can be an example, you know, for anybody. You know, life is an adventure, Denise. It's just an adventure. Why being afraid of trying anything? You, we, yeah. you know life is just such a great adventure let's just try everything and and uh yes even even when it's scary but really what's the worst that can happen you know i'm not gonna die yeah, from this and, so, and the more we understand men and this is really my my mission is i believe that men and women really want the same things mm -hmm. but because we have things like divorce and pain and we don't live in a perfect world um, there's so much misunderstandings and misbehavior going on. And so it's not that there's a ton of bad men out there. I mean, there are bad men, but most men are not bad men. They're just behaving like bad men, right? Uh -huh. And so we as women have to really raise our standards and teach men how to treat us. And that's right. really at the crux of things is teaching men how to treat us and then re communicating with them in a way that inspires them to want to be with us and to connect and provide for us. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the, the core or the pillars of what I share with women. And I see that that's what you're sharing with them as well as treat yourself like number one first, you're the prize first. Mm -hmm. And then we can raise our standards for others to treat us the way we should. All people, not just men. Absolutely. The, 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 best, the better version that we become of ourselves, you know, the, the yeah. better we are out there to inspire others and make this, this world better. better. I honestly, I, mm -hmm. I, I dream of a world in which women, you know, know their value a hundred percent and uh, they're confident and they can inspire others to follow. Because I always believe that, you know, men are not bad. Their mothers and other women make them like that because we don't raise their standards, we let them get away from, we teach them how to treat us. Uh, so it's not their fault, their nature is their nature. And we have a very powerful um, nature to be able to influence them, but out of fear, I think, and our lack of confidence, um, we just doing it, don't do it the right way and we end up with a man behaving badly, basically. Because I said, I told you, like, I. Married three times, and believe me, they were not bad men. They, they were not, you know. They never treated me wrong. Um, they were just, you know, in a in a low standard, in a low level that, you know, I shouldn't go have. I they just didn't belong here up, yeah. up with me, and I had no right to push somebody to be something that he is not and doesn't want to be. It's yeah. not my right. So I had to let him go. 
and having them go and be what they wanted to to be so i'm going to put a link to your facebook group here at the end of this video i'm also going to okay. put a link to um that webinar with dates and everything and uh everybody is going to be getting in my mailing list will be getting an email blast with everything so they can sign up and join your group and then we definitely had to plan together especially when when i'm in austin in a couple of weeks we had to get together and plan something better because i think this is a topic that we all women love oh, and wow. yes and if it is not for us we always know somebody that we can help with and we can send our way um yeah. about dating you come on down to austin so then let's get i'll get some single men round up and ladies, why don't we bring the men on camera and we'll interview a man. That time. would be great. That would be great. I love that. We have to interview, you know, a couple of men. And, and I'm going to, we have to start, you know, the conversation. What are you looking for? Age ranges, you know, things that women are looking for in men and um, and things that are yeah. ridiculously. Well, I would love to hear anything that you're uh, ladies listening, you know, any questions they have, you know, feel free to comment and I'll read the comments. And mm -hmm. I just want to thank you though, for taking your time and giving me this platform to talk. Yeah. Uh, I love your work. I look forward to learning more about it. And, um, to all you sexy ladies out there who haven't had the boudoir fo uh, photo session yet, get it. Yeah. And, um, Remember that there is some amazing man out there who's going to appreciate you just the way you are. So yeah. just remember, you're fine the way you are. Yeah.